Um, I love using them because then I don't have to like switch paintbrushes every five seconds depending on how thick I want my line to be. So, but when I want my th uh, lines to be really thin and delicate, I'll usually go for a smaller paintbrush like my round two. And what I'm going to do is you're gonna pick up some paint and what I like to do after I pick up paint is I will actually take my paintbrush and smoosh it on my tray, which means I will flip it back and forth, which means it's gonna make a point. Because sometimes, even if we're using a small brush, if we have a lot of water and a lot of paint on our brush, it's still gonna be a thicker line. So if you want it as thin as you can, I pick up paint, I smush it back and forth, and then I'm going to do a thin line across. I'm not gonna rest my wrist, I'm actually gonna keep like you can, you can put your wrist on the table, but don't put your weight on it. And you're gonna use your arm to glide across. And I'm holding my paintbrush vertical, which means it's up and down straight from my paper. And YouTube the YouTube is now online. Oh, YouTube's working now. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, Leanna says she tends to drown her paintings. Is there any tip on how to control water to color ratio? Yes, Leanna, use your paper towel more than how you're using it. Because sometimes what people do is they think that because a lighter value needs to have more water, they'll load their paint with, paintbrush with water and grab a little bit of paint and then paint, and it makes it really, really watery. So um, you don't have to do it that way. You can like pick up get some water, get a little bit of color, and then dab it on your paper towel to get rid of the excess water, and then you paint, and then it's a thinner amount of paint on your painting. Suzanne, can you pay attention, please? <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm kidding. Aisha, you can get your own paintbrushes at Let's Make Cards. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> Snap. Debbie, that was really funny. Was <laughs> Debbie, would you like a job? No. <laughs> okay, so the reason why we don't plant our wrist is if you plant your wrist and you put all the weight on your wrist, when you try and do a thin line, you're limited in how far you can go before your arm starts to like hurt. You're like, oh wait, that's as far as I can go. Also, it tends to have a round motion because that's how our wrist moves. So if you want a thin line and long, just keep the weight off of your wrist and use your shoulder or your arm to pull it. Also, um, people might feel more comfortable doing thin lines going up or down, going left to right, it does not matter. You can switch your paper around to whatever way. Um, I'm just saying this because if you look at our buildings, we have some detail lines here where I kind of go over some edges. So I'm just showing you how to get a nice thin line for those edges on our building. Okay, now the very last thing that we are going to do is we're going to go back to a value change, but we're going to try and do it in one swoop. So it's essentially going to be the same thing that we did at the beginning, but we're just going to connect them and do them quickly. Uh, watercolor is kind of funny where you sometimes have to work quickly while it's wet or give it time to dry. So it's kind of like a little dance. So um, that's how that I like to dance, think of it. Though. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I go? Do I wait? This is going, yes. and this is waiting for it to dry. That's nice. Okay. Thank so you. when we do this transition, you're going to go fast. You're going to like, yeah, maybe even lean forward. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. So I'm picking up my paintbrush. Uh, we are using space blue, sea blue, and yellow ochre for those who are just joining in. Okay. So I'm picking up my paint. I'm doing my rectangle. Okay. Instantly grabbing some water, going right where I left off, and keep on going to the right. And just repeat that <coughs> over and over again until uh, Blakelin asked, when you say blend it out, is that when you are doing a value change? Uh, yes, so this is similar to blending it out. Another way to blend it out, for example, is like Looking at this, if I wanted to soften this edge, I can just take a damp brush and go along the edges and kind of like work it back and forth. And you can see that even though it's not erasing the line, it's softening the line and blending out that color. So that's what I mean by blending it out is basically you're kind of like uh, smearing 
the edges. If you have any hard lines, you go in there and you blend them out. Uh, why don't you ever use a paper towel? I do, it's right here, my little friend. I always paint with one, they're really wonderful. Okay, that's all the warm ups. let's get ready to paint. So, grab your paper. Can, can I add one more fact about your warm-ups that I don't know if you mentioned? Yeah. When you do the blending out, if you always go back to where the, it's the darkest, it ends up being an even value. Oh yeah, Keenan. Yes, good point. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what happened here. <laughs> so. Yes. I got you. All there we go. That, that's okay. what I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> so the point of this is to have the transition in value where it's clear where it's dark, it's clear where it's medium, and it's clear where, it, where it's light. But watercolor is really funny where the colors will blend together if you work them a lot. So for example, if I'm trying to make a dark to light like this. Okay, so that's my dark to light, right? But if I go like this back and forth over and over, mm -hmm. then that paint is going to evenly disperse over the water, which will get rid of our value changes. <laughs> which this isn't a bad thing because sometimes we do want an even wash. So it's good to know how to do that too. Uh, but if you want to keep your value separate and have that transition, you don't want to like mess with it back and forth too much. Good job. Okay. All right, now let's get to our painting. Also, can we just look at how cool that is? That looks good. I like it. Yeah, that, that looks, looks super awesome. It's okay to say you like something that you make. Yes, <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. Also, um, if, you, if your water is really, really dark and muddy from the warm-ups, you're probably going to want to go clean it. We have extra waters here for you guys. Um, I'll just keep on using this one, actually. That one's fine. Um, but when you're doing light washes, the color of your water does matter. When you're doing dark, uh, like darker values, it doesn't matter as much because the paint is so dark that it covers up the paint water color most of the time anyway. All right, step one, we are going to do a light wash across all of the buildings. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. Can you pull your painting down a little bit? Yes, I can. Thank you. This, this, can they see the reference too? Yes, they can. Oh, I guess I can see right there what everything looks like. Okay. That's true as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? Now we are doing a light wash first, which means my paintbrush has water, and now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of paint. So instead of like dipping my entire belly of the brush, I'm actually just gonna grab a little bit of color, just a little, and then start um, putting it in over my buildings. Now you guys get to decide um, what colors you want to do exactly. Maybe you prefer the space blue over the sea blue, or maybe you like mixing in that yellow ochre and having it mostly green. It's totally up to you. you. This is where you guys get to decide. Now to get this green color, I'm um, slightly, I'm just putting in a little bit of that yellow ochre. Just like that. and just keep going across um, all of the buildings. Now, I would like to say that when you get to the um, like edges, especially like over, oh, I think I forgot a window over here. Um, like the, uh, when it goes to a different level, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, nope. Tier, <laughs> yes. When you go to a different tier of the building, just leave a little thin white line in between. If you didn't on this first building, don't freak out because I totally forgot till right now. So I didn't do it here. But in the other ones, try and leave a really thin white line because that's going to act as a highlight. And right next to a dark value, that highlight's going to pop and make it seem more dimensional than it is. So. Where are we leaving white line? I'm sorry. So whenever there's like a new tier. So you okay. see how there's like yeah, tier. Yeah. And then also over here, like these are different tiers. Now, oh, that's really beautiful. Um, this is like, <laughs> you can like your own stuff, it's okay. <laughs> she's all mad, she's like, thanks. <laughs> so this, I really like this project because it's kind of like, um, 
uh, urban sketching or it has like a sketchiness to it where you basically like go out into the world and you do like watercolor marks. I wish you could see Keaton's hand. He went like this. <laughs> and you create like a watercolor wash and then you just use like a pen, like a black pen or something and you create the lines that shape the buildings and it's really beautiful. I have this book on urban um, sketching and urban watercolor and it's just, I really love that style. So it's just another style and another way for you guys to play with watercolor. Although, I will, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say he did that because he's been really into Aladdin lately. Oh, did you see the new movie? No. It's <laughs> really good, actually. He song, like, 24-7. <laughs> is it, it is good? I liked it. Okay, I haven't seen it either. My favorite part is the, awimboe, awimboe. <laughs> right? Yep, that's it's it. It's the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> the Aladdin Lion King crossover movie. Yeah. And this is also where it's nice and wet like this. You can do the wet on wet technique that we were doing earlier where you're just like near the bottom of the building, let's go crazy. It's just like, I'm just gonna drop in some color and like spread that around and let it get a little funky. Drop in some water droplets. I would love to use the side cam, but your noggin keeps getting in the way. Oh, okay. I'll do this. I didn't know how I was to I'm just gonna get closer <laughs> no, to you. Totally okay. Head in the way? No, it's just yeah. me. Okay. Because right. it's like a close-up right here. Okay. So Tell me you when you're on the side cam so I can do my I little... Will. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How far down should we go? Do we go to like, like... I would just... You can go all the way off your paper or you can let it be a rough <coughs> edge, kind of like how I okay. have it here. It doesn't have to be clean and straight all the time. It can be a little uh, funky, you know what I mean? Suzanne gets it. I would also like to say that um, if you do decide to go out and sketch what you see in person, which is really amazing, um, it's also more difficult to do than like trying to paint off of a picture. Um, so don't get too mad at yourself if it's if you're struggling with it because it takes a lot of practice and the reason why it's really hard is because when you are painting off of a picture whatever you're painting has already been flattened into a two-dimensional form because it's a piece of paper or it's flat on the screen when you are painting in person and trying to do it in like off of real life um, you are the one that has to flatten it into a two-dimensional form which is really like our brain it's difficult for our brain to like figure out how to do that so um, it takes practice but you can absolutely do it and it's a lot of fun, but I just wanted to say like, don't get too frustrated if you're struggling with it because um, it's a skill. And that's why it's a lot easier to paint off of reference photos than it is to paint off of real life. What's up? YouTube is asking since they were a little late to the party, yeah. if you could tell us the colors again. Yes. And then also uh, someone asked and wet first, but I don't think and wet first. I don't. You're not. not you're not doing water first, right? You're just doing straight paint on there as a wash, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. maybe that's what they're asking. Okay. I think that's what it is. So the colors that we're using are sea blue, space blue, and yellow ochre. If you have Dr. Ph Martin, the the equivalents are um, juniper green, slate blue, and um, like daffodil yellow and golden brown for our yellow ochre. They don't have a straight equivalent. Um, the the thing that we're doing right now is a light wash so i'm actually putting the paper the paint that's so beautiful it this looks is great <laughs> you're doing do great yes <laughs> here let's let's put this in this great i'm pretty proud of that great color washes yeah, yeah that looks and really nice red. all right um, so we're laying them down simultaneously if you want to do the water first and then drop in the paint you are free to do that just warning you, you will get hard lines, you will get blooms. I love those. So if you like those, then go for it. Celebrate the blooms. Cel sure. Celebrate the blooms. T-shirt idea. Aisha <laughs> keeps trying to take my job right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, to bring you down a notch, it is called Blue Buildings. I don't know what the yellow's from. Uh, oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kenan, that's not I, welcome here. <laughs> Just Kenan, try to make one joke. Kenan, can you leave, and you actually? Get a text. 
I am uncomfortable now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Friendship over. <laughs> so who are you? <laughs> Uh, I guess for the viewers to know, they've known each other a very long time yeah. and they are friends. Yes, that's true. So. I am married to his best friend. Yeah. So. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> also, <laughs> we, ate, we ate tacos at like 3 o'clock in the morning in Lawrence one time. I cooked for him. Was that oh, there? I don't, I don't know. remember that. No, it was one, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Where was that? In Missouri. In, in Missouri. Oh, well, <laughs> Ooh, that's really pretty, Helen. I love, I love that. that. It's been a long time. Shout out to sure. Lawrence, Kansas. And the Jayhawks. Also, I would like to say that I was watching the live last week and Brock said I made fun of his birds, which I did not do <laughs> at all. And I was like, Brock, why are you going to be telling people I'm making fun of things yeah. when I'm not, you know? I mean, I wasn't there, but I know Brock, and I don't think he would have lied about that. So I don't uh, know. <laughs> I'm just saying, Brock, I'm calling you out. I wouldn't make fun of your birds. Wait, but maybe I did though. Never mind. Because <laughs> I told him not to do it in a straight line and he did it in a perfectly straight line. Maybe I was teasing him about that. Okay, 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 never mind. All right, so we got our washes. I have some dark. I left some white spaces and that's okay because this is a very sketchy like painting. If you didn't, that's okay. You guys, it's okay, it's fine. It's your painting anyway. Um, the reason why I like to how do I explain this? Because um, sometimes when you're painting, it's better to almost use your paintbrush as if it's a pencil and you're just making marks, okay? Whether they're horizontal, whether they're vertical, instead of taking your paintbrush and just doing an even wash across the entire thing, which is what our brain is telling us to do. It's how you're trained with coloring books. It's all of those things. So it's not like it's wrong, but when you lift up your paintbrush and you let and you allow brush marks and sketchiness and white spaces, it gives the opportunity for your painting to have a little bit more dimension because you're leaving highlights for values. That's all it is. So that's step one. You guys, you nailed it. Good job, you're doing a great job, boom. Okay, now we're gonna do our darker values on our building. So if you are looking at this, um, this landscape or cityscape, how it's going, is this street is going along this way. So it's at an angle. Because it's at an angle, we are seeing multiple sides of the building. Um, this is the side, this is the front of the building. This is the front, this is the side, this is the front. We don't actually see the side on this building. Now this um, is where it kind of intersects with the street. So this building we're seeing face on which is why we're not really seeing the side of it. And the light is coming straight. So this building is gonna be highlighted and our sides of the building are actually gonna be highlighted and then the fronts of our building are gonna have a darker value because um, the shadow, it's creating a shadow since the light isn't hitting that. Does that make sense? So um, what we're gonna go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the fronts of our building where the light is not hitting and putting in basically another layer on top of it that's a little bit darker. And that's how we are going to create that um, dimension on our building a little bit more. Cause right now they're looking a little flat, right? But right when we go in, and of course you can use whatever colors you want. I'm gonna grab a little bit of space blue and a little bit of my C. Now they kind of also mix together on one side and that's fine since I'm like mixing them anyway. <coughs> but Helen, if you want me to get fresh piles, just let me know. No, no. Okay, so like on the side of the building, I'm just going in. Now this is a little bit dark. So I put it down and then my brain is like, okay, that's too dark, but never fear. You just wet your paintbrush, hit it off the side of your paper towel and just use that paint for the rest of the area and take from that color and that is gonna create that's gonna like lighten it up. So if you put a mark down and you're like, oh no, that's too dark, don't keep on painting it and think like too late. Just like use water actually to, um, to spread out that color that's already there. I'm gonna switch to that side cam for a minute. Okay, I will try really hard to keep my noggin out of it. That was an extra reason you wanted me to tell you. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Could you see it? <laughs> Did you see it yet? <laughs> you just get all of my chins. 
<laughs> the most attractive thing about me is my five chins when I do that. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can see it on the thing. I wondered why you were laughing about it. <laughs> no, there it goes. No, yep, <laughs> that is all just my chins. <laughs> Uh. Nicole's on YouTube and she says, I wish I was there. The whole crew is together and rocking the tees. Aww, Aww Nicole. Nicole. Nicole's our fabulous lettering artist. If you want to ever want to give lettering a shot, she's so great. She does a wonderful job. Yes, yes. Yes, you're doing it right. If you put too much color down or if you have too much water on your paper, use your handy dandy paper towel and just like suction that up. It will lighten up the color that's there. It'll also pick up the extra water. Very useful. Okay, so I'm kind of just working my way around this building. Again, I'm doing more of a sketchiness of the brush strokes where I'm kind of just doing smaller marks, lifting up my paintbrush in between, not like totally covering the area if, you, if that makes any sense. Leaving white spaces. Leaving white spaces, yeah. By picking up, just by picking up my paintbrush. You keep saying sketchiness, and it's making me think of like illegal activity. <laughs> <laughs> also, give us your credit card number right now. <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> if your social security number was all the money you had in the bank, how much money would you have? <laughs> Comment. <laughs> I actually saw that one time, and then I, I and then I started to type it out, and then I was just like, Sarah, no, <laughs> right. don't do it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't oh, put so it in. There have been uh, a few comments I've seen. Okay. People are telling Brock to get a fifth camera. A are calling it the Keenan Cam. Oh, so they could see you. <laughs> I like being behind the camera. That would be really <laughs> great, though. <laughs> like, we have just four picture in pictures, and it's just everybody's different faces, reactions. <laughs> okay. So, um, I put in my darker values on the front side of the building, and already for me, I feel like I now have more dimension and shape to my buildings. They feel a little bit more three-dimensional where before because it was an even value it just seemed more flat I think this, is my favorite project. this project is uh, really fun I know it's different than what we've done before but oh also I would like to say that if you have the step outs the step outs are slightly different directions than um, what I broke it down for in the video and sometimes that's because after I paint a project I then try and simplify it so there's not like 12 steps you know what I mean um, but the reason why I leave the step outs that way is because I also want you to see that there are many many different ways that you can approach the same painting and I don't think that there's a right or a wrong and so I think it's valuable to see how you can um, approach something in different ways and still end up with the same painting and as you paint more you will have a preference of how you like to go about painting something so I think it's just valuable to see um, different approaches and that you can still like be successful so um, yes I that's definitely not the first time I've done it where the step out has been slightly different from the tutorial but I realized that I never explained why and that's why Okay, I'm also going to do a slightly darker value. If you're looking at our main building here, these things are kind of popping up. They're on a different plane. And so to, in order for these side things to come forward, we have to push what's behind it back. And how to push something back in a painting is you make it a darker value. So I'm just gonna go in and work around these side things. And just by putting in a slightly different value, darker value, it will um, automatically create distance, which is really cool, I think. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is why you guys are married. <laughs> <laughs> and he says that about seven. Oh, I love that shadow right there Even on Eleanor the front part. Says it now. Yeah. She's like, pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. Eleanor says, How do you say cool, Dad? I'm like, pretty cool. <laughs> So just from, and I just painted this 
part right here, but now for me it's so much more clear that they're on two different planes and one's sticking out more than the other. That's what we want. Should we do a check-in? Sure. Okay. It's been a while. I feel like I kept on forgetting the last couple of times. I also need to apologize. My stomach is growling. I've heard it twice. <laughs> so. Are you hungry? <laughs> we have chocolate. There's a stash of chocolate? Yeah. There's always chocolate. It's literally Keenan's yeah. job to have a stash of it's chocolate in his tertiary drawer. It's my tertiary job. <laughs> it can't be worse than Brock's really loud breathing. <laughs> Brock does do some heavy breathing into that. He just sighs. He's a sigher. Well, no, he, he's just... He has a heavy exhale. He admits it. I, I'm not he like. Does. It's fine. He knows yeah. about it. We're not yeah. being mean. So he knows. We talk about it openly. What, Let me give you that. Okay. <laughs> What's the chocolate menu? Chocolate <laughs> <laughs> she was going to go right about okay. the chocolate. Yeah. We've got we've got some peanut butter M and M's. Yes, done. Got some paydays. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have Cadbury mini eggs in my purse. An <gasps> assortment of how milk Hershey, dark chocolate crunch, Mr. Good Bar. Is the toffee one the one with the gold wrapper? And it's got like toffee and almond. No, 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 no. There's no. almond, but Please, I don't think there's toffee almond. That's a little excessive. <laughs> uh, York peppermint patty and the new brand of Butterfinger. New brand? Yeah, they rebranded. I would just like the M&Ms that uh, have peanut butter inside, please. <laughs> From the very beginning where <laughs> she said I yes. Said the first, yes. They're unopened. Oh. Oh yeah, open those up. Also, just another thing to throw in here. My birthday is on the 27th, so it is birthday Ooh. month. Ooh. Happy birthday! Aisha is a serious she birthday really month <laughs> celebrator. <laughs> I just looked at Kate and like, is she really going to take my peanut butter and <laughs> yeah. That look of fear just They're crossed gone. my face. It's I'm birthday like, month. <laughs> I she it. just walks out with the bag. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to take all of you. You right? actually can. It's your that's birthday month. That's the only reason Aisha came. <laughs> it's your birthday month. Birthday month, month day 11. Okay. We're going to check it. Helen, okay. I'm going to take this. Okay. This is Helen's. I think the soft wash that she got was is really beautiful. I love the hints of green that's underneath here and the blooms that she's getting over here. Um, I think her darker value is looking really nice. Um, the only thing that I would say is that it's really, really even mm -hmm. on their darker on the darker okay. value, which is fine because we still have to go in and do like our dark lines. And so, just when you go in and do your dark lines, allow for your paintbrush to pick up. Okay. So you can do more um, yeah. sk sketchy. Yeah, I didn't do the lines. sketchy. Yes, <laughs> but that's okay because it's. Like we still have more layers to do, so it's okay. not like this is a lost cause. Just next time when you go and do details, just like pick it up. <laughs> I tried. Okay, we're gonna do Helen, Aisha's. That was beautiful. Okay, this is Aisha's, and I think her soft wash is really lovely. Um, it's a little bit more green, which I think is great, and why I love that you guys mix your own colors because you can figure out what colors you want. Um, she did pick up her brush. I do see some lighter areas on the edges here, which is great. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is because we're doing buildings, um, buildings ha have really straight, sharp edges. Mm -hmm. um, so when we go in to do like our windows and our um, like darker values that we're going to do in the next step, mm -hmm. try and keep the lines a little bit um, like on like straight on the edge because see how this your darker value kind of blends yeah. out over here now when you're doing buildings um it actually is going to mess with your perspective when you do that it's going to make it seem like your buildings aren't realistic because your lines aren't totally straight and like anything else like flowers or organic shapes it doesn't matter right. but because we're working with something that's so structural then um, when you start to change the even the um, angle of the line and if it's wavy then it's going to make the building feel like um, this okay. does that make sense so um, it's not a big deal just when you go in to do your darker values try and make sure your lines are a little bit more straight and true to the outline just to make it feel solid Sounds good. But it's I looking it. great. All right, Suzanne, you up. Okay, this is looking really great. <coughs> so I love her colors. I like that her darker values are more of a blue, which is a, a really cool painting technique that um, if 
uh, if you're familiar with some artists, they'll do all of their paintings, like the highlights in warm colors, and then do the shadows in cool colors, like blues, which is really cool. So I, I'm kind of feeling that right here, and I think that's awesome. Um, I would probably say the same thing that I told Aisha, and maybe a little bit. Actually, you lifted up your paperish. I see some highlights here. That's okay. Just don't be afraid to to really just like honestly think about lifting up your brush and also try and <laughs> we're all a little sketchy <laughs> um, and just try and keep your lines a little bit more straight because that's going to give your building a more real structured feel okay all right taylor okay to preface this, this okay the worst I've ever done. oh don't you <laughs> oh say God. that look, look, look it's bleeding like it's okay so okay <laughs> so that is some pretty bleeding though. This it's is, pretty, yeah. yeah, this is Taylor's. I think it's looking good. She's lifting yeah. up her brush. There's value changes into this building. I think the only part you seem frustrated with is here. Yeah. Is that right? Okay, here is where watercolor is really great is we can lighten up some areas. So it's not like, cause it did bleed a little bit and get some places, but that's okay. You can lighten up. Is it okay if I paint on this? So <laughs> if I just take some water and put it on the area that I want to lighten up, just get it wet. Somebody just reminded you about the You can take your paper <laughs> towel and after you get it wet, use your paper towel to lift up the extra color. So that <laughs> lightened it. Okay, so we're putting in our highlights again by lifting color off. It's not gonna get rid of it completely. Watercolor you cannot erase completely, but you can at least lighten it. Okay, and then when that dries, just go back in and redefine that edge. Okay, okay but don't do it now because when it's wet, it will bleed yeah. in. Okay. And then see, this. It looks like my paper has like, did I erase too hard? Is that a thing? Um, sometimes if you are using an eraser to erase before, erasers, how they work is they actually erase the, the paper fibers instead of the pencil line. So if you erase really heavily with a regular eraser, it will degrade your paper before you start painting. If you use a, uh, we sell an eraser, it's a gummy eraser. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a better name for it, but I can't. Needed eraser, thank you. <laughs> Customer service is so it's great to have on here. <laughs> um, but the, <laughs> the reason why the needed eraser is really great is it will it will only erase the, the uh, graphite, it won't, damage your paper. <coughs> so in watercolor, it's really helpful, but because we were just using regular pencils, that's why. So you just have a little bit more of a texture to your painting. And I say that you just embrace it and say like, this is really cool. Because like, um, it is really cool and you're getting some really cool textural lines right here and right here and right there, which I you should just go for and celebrate. Because it's no point like hating it. It is what it is and you can just celebrate it instead of being like, I'm the worst because you're not the worst like how would you know that unless I told you when I should have <laughs> I'm really sorry <laughs> okay <coughs> so now we are going to move to step three we are going to do our darker values so I'm going to switch over to my round two because I'm going to do more thinner lines and this is where we're starting to put in um, the darker values on um, like the edges of our building here. So this is kind of where um, the sketchiness also comes into play because <laughs> now I'm starting to hear it only as like <laughs> sketchy. Um, or shady. Or shady, yeah, shady people. Um, so when like these kind of lines that I'm doing on my building here, they go on the side and also on the front. So um, now this is probably this, how do I explain what I'm saying? If you were to paint a super realistic painting of buildings, you probably wouldn't have such harsh lines like we have right here. But this is just another style of painting where it's just a quick way to show that there's different levels, different tiers, and there's dimension without having to like blend and do perfectly smooth uh, value transitions in between levels. So that's why we're doing that. So I'm gonna grab my two. I'm gonna pick up some color. And so like on this tier on my big building, think of it like a cake. I'm gonna like, just like do my, now this is where like my line went way more crooked than what's on there. I'm gonna try and straighten that out a little bit because this is where if your lines are 
crooked or wavy, it will um, be a little bit difficult. It will really affect how you see that painting. It will change the perspective of it. So if you can, try and keep it straight. I'm just going to thicken this line to kind of even it out. But also because it's like a sketchy painting in general, <laughs> sketchy-ish, <sorry>. it's okay. <laughs> um, it's okay if the lines are slightly crooked. It's not a huge deal. I'm just saying, like, don't go too crazy. So somebody's asking which way the light is coming from. It's coming straight this way. And I just want you to, to know that this is two different perspectives of the building. It's like we're standing. Think of like you're standing on the street and you have the buildings coming alongside you. These buildings are coming on the side of us. This one is straight on. So it's like side and then straight facing us. So there's, it's like if this building were to keep going, they would run into each other. What's that word? Perpen, what's this? Perpendicular. Perpendicular, is that right? They're perpendicular to each other. Horizontal. <laughs> Vertical. And parallel. Yes. They're not parallel. Everyone's the same. Everyone stop. We're on the same page. We're just at different places in our thoughts. Yeah. And try and, um, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blend out this line a little bit because this this dark value I put in is a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna kind of softly blend it, this out. So then it kind of like evens a little bit and it's not such a harsh, dark outline. So I'm just gonna kind of, but maybe you're grabbing more of a medium value and you don't have to do this step. I would like to go to the camera. Could, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll stop putting my shoulder in front of it. And then also like in between um, here, we have a darker value like on the, the antenna is dark and then this space in between this area is dark. Can they hear it? I can hear her. I just won't. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need a like Turn your paper to the side because it's easier for me to do a straight line if I'm going horizontal than if I'm going vertical. But um, I'm going to try really hard not to turn my paper so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but just do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do to get a straight line. Oh, Susan said she's a lefty and she found it's easier for these dark lines to flip her paper upside down to two them. That's a great idea. Susan, thank you. And then we have some, um, the little antenna here I just kept dark and... <laughs> okay, did you ever see So I Married an Axe Murderer? Hid! Move! <laughs> Hid! Move your noggin! <laughs> I can't see the telly! <laughs> I'm so happy you've seen that movie and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's so good. This guy's on Wild Works in there. Al will love that one too. It's so good. Classic. Okay. Now another thing I would like to bring your attention to, because I just noticed it on mine, is I'm looking especially at this middle tier on my Empire State Building, and my light value next to my dark value is so different that this almost looks like I didn't paint it at all. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Um, you guys, it doesn't look like any of you else are having this oh, issue, I think it's just you? me. Yeah, so if I'm looking at the sides of this, okay. this looks so light compared to my dark. When that happens, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit more color, not a lot, just a little bit to bring up the values so they're like, so you can tell that it actually has color. Does that make sense? You say yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm shocked no one said yes. I was waiting for it. I know. I'm just like, we're, we're all concentrated. Also, you too, Keenan. That's your job too. Yes. 
I assumed that the four ladies, the four other people <laughs> meeting with me, yes. would respond to what I said. <laughs> yeah. Would respond to my question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she can talk to them like that because they're married. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Paula asks, "What is what was it about the buildings that inspired me to paint them?" Um, I just personally love painting buildings because I feel like once you understand that it's all about um, the angles and the values, they're actually like really straightforward. And usually they're really intimidating because you're like, that's a lot of detail. But if you can just break it down and be like, no, 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 this side is the lighter side, this side is the darker side, and here are all the angles, then it, it, it's a really, I think, fun way to create a three-dimensional painting without being too like <coughs> whatever but I know that people look at buildings and think like I can't do that so I just wanted to show you like you can you just break it down break I like it down that you said straightforward step. rather than easy yes actually mine looks like a cactus too except with one arm what if we just made it a cactus did you see we the person are. who added like um, King Kong to theirs? Like, yes! That, that, was, that was so cool. That was so cool. I'm adding a cactus. I'm going to add a little arm on mine because why not? Oh, one, one person did the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, you know, the big fluffy. Oh, yes. Michelin, Michelin tire man. man. <laughs> no, the Michelin tire. No, the Michelin. No, I saw a ghost one. Oh, the, I, oh, did, I didn't see that one, but that probably is really cool too. We're talking about a couple different things. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of cool <laughs> things in the Facebook group. <laughs> I'm always amazed at what people come up with. It's awesome. I know. Yes, I love that so much. It, like my graphite paper moved while I was racing. That's why I have like double Cute. lines. That's great. So you know, I think the cactus is perfect. The cactus. It is now the desert empire <laughs> <laughs> in Arizona. Desert empire. State building. State building. In Arizona. <laughs> so okay, I don't and know where I'm this one is, but <laughs> this one is now in Arizona. Now it's in Arizona. It's the Arizona building state. State, state. state building. The state building of the desert cactus. <laughs> um, oh, and when I was talking and we talked about easy and straightforward, the reason why I try not to say easy is you all need to understand that there will be some paintings that are come um like in yoga what's the term they use they use like nemesis they use nemesis poses when you really struggle with like a like i cannot like touch my toes that's like a nem nemesis pose for me right that's just mm -hmm. what my body struggles with so like you're going to approach some subjects and some styles of painting and you're just going to struggle with it and that's okay every single person is different so for some people the really structured straight lines they're good with those you're like yes i got this and then some <laughs> people they're like no that's actually really hard for me i just want to paint i just want to be loose i just want to do what i want to do you know so i i just want to acknowledge that what we struggle with and what we find easy or difficult is going to just depend on who we are and what we can, our skill level, and also just what we, um, like I've always been able to do flowers has been one of my favorite things to paint ever since I started painting. That's just something that came a little bit more naturally to me than um, really structured paintings. I struggle with trees. Yeah. Cannot paint trees, a good tree. Trees are a beast. They really are. They're, um, I'm, I was thinking of actually doing a, like an oak tree, like doing a different tree than my all the same tree that the I've been doing forever. The triangle shaped tree no, just it, beats me every time. We're going to do a different tree. The triangle Maybe it's the tree. fir tree. The fir tree is my enemy. Yeah. Susan's got some good jokes right now. What's the tallest building in the city? The library because it has so many stories. <laughs> Susan, that She's is dead. a new slapper. Susan. You hear the joke about the roof. Never mind. It's over your head. <laughs> <laughs> like Susan. Susan. <laughs> Susan, I appreciate you and you're one of us, absolutely. I also would like to say that in my travels, I came across a shirt that said, Cereal Chiller, and I 100% bought that shirt. I absolutely. That. <laughs> absolutely. Not only do I love true crime, but I also love chilling. So it was like the best of both worlds and made me so happy. Even my shoulder keeps popping. 
Suzanne's body's a little tense enough. <laughs> She's like, ah. Ten years of dance and three years of roller derby, my body is done. Okay, what kind of dance did you do? Ballet, tap, jazz, point. Wow. Man, I oh. wish you could like give us a, a small demonstration. But yeah, can right you now. Like, right can now? you do that? Can you stand on this table <laughs> and just dance for a second? <laughs> 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 I don't think you're thinking the same thing. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm sorry. But We're that's about sketchiness, so that's <laughs> That's amazing. I think dance is beautiful in all of its forms. And also, I tried doing tap, tap, uh, for, tap. The, <laughs> for the first time when I was in college. And it it's is hard. so much harder than you would think. Because you're like, I could tap my foot. I can tap my hand. No, you're, tap <laughs> you're tapping your toe and your heel, heel. simultaneously. And the silence, heel toe, heel the, silence, toe. Heel toe. Like the silence is just as important as the noise. Like the break between the noise. Oh, I love just that. as important as... That's a deep. Part of the rhythm. That's a deep thought. It you is. know what I mean? That is. Thank you. I'm really I'm struggling with these deep these thoughts lines. by uh, <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> these straight lines are not doing it for me. Yeah. But are okay. they bleeding? Is like, that what's happening? Yeah. Here? Okay. Okay. Let me show you what's going on. I, so. So Aisha's doing her lines, but they're bleeding a little bit. The reason why they're bleeding is because I think you're using a little bit too strong of color because okay. these are pretty highly concentrated. So if you don't put in a little bit of water okay. and you're using straight paint, they mm -hmm. will have a fuzzy edge. Okay. So all you got to do is just be like, here, here's some paint and then mix a little bit of water in there. So it's still dark. And that should help with the, what if she's like, didn't help. <laughs> I followed you step Please by step. Please don't make me look like a fool right now. <laughs> if it doesn't work, just don't say anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it did work. Oh, it did? Yeah. I mean, okay. this was before. Also, let me trade you brushes. That might be it. I was noticing there's like a... Yeah, the you, have a, is, you have a slightly different brush. You can use that one. Okay. I'll use this one. Because I ran out of brushes, okay? I'm a, I, we are literally in an art store. Oh. <laughs> We don't try to use the things we sell. <laughs> we try and sell the things we, we sell. sell them. <laughs> I, could, I have some at home I could have brought. Yeah, Suzanne. Dang. Come on. Sorry. Wow. Okay, so I'm just kind of putting in my dark edges on my building. Did that help? Oh, not yet. I think maybe my paper's too wet. I don't know. It's still doing it. Okay, let me, can I paint yes, on yours? Yes, you can. Okay. I won't paint on yours. <laughs> Okay, let me make this great green that you have going on here. My hair is wet sticking my shirt. Oh, you're fine. Let's just see what that does for a second. Um, I'm also wondering is if, if you try and do a thin line slow, mm -hmm. then um, the paint will kind of like ball up as you're going slow. Okay. Does that make sense? Which I am because I'm struggling with these straight lines. Yeah. So if you're trying to go too slow, do they have a nice <laughs> close up on that actually? Yeah. Um, so if I'm doing a thin line and if I want it to do nice and thin, I'm going to do a little bit more quick. So see how I'm doing like mm -hmm. just quick. And it's scary to do that because you're kind of just going for it yeah. and that's really hard to do. If you slow down and try and do a thin line, then um, it's more likely that your paint will disperse unevenly mm -hmm. and also that you will have thicker and thinner parts because you're because it's really hard to keep an even pressure when you're going super, super slow. Um, so you can see that just by, um, if you're just like, you know what, this is really scary, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna do a thin straight line, bam. But if I'm gonna like try and do it that way. And especially if you have a lot more paint on your brush, it's going to create, um, I think that's what's going on here. So yeah, just, yeah. so just be like, you know what, this is do just do it quick. I'm going to go for it. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll mess up this painting and you throw it away. Like that's mm -hmm. literally the worst thing, which you have done. So all of us have done harder things than that. Going to the dentist, I would say is harder than this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Who sure. likes going to the I dentist? Get a crown too. Yeah, it's so rough. The worst. Those are terrible. So I'm just saying this is not as bad as that, and you hopefully do that pretty regularly. So. All right, one, two, three, go. Boom. Oh. Yeah. Oh, actually surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did it. 
and went for it. And look at that. See, and now it's thin and it's like, I don't think yes. I could do that again, though. <laughs> that's okay. It's like a, that's a one time. Because thing. you can look at that and be like, I freaking I nailed that line. That line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Susan got more digs. She's awesome. Whoa. What animal can jump higher than a building? Any animal a building can't jump. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> These are great. Throwing shade at buildings. I never thought that we would have the building <laughs> puns, but um, it's really great. Seriously. And this is why I love all of you. Mm -hmm. This is why we're meant to be friends. So I was doing the dark values on the front of my building and then I realized I was ignoring the ones on the side. So I went and put them on the side. And then I'm just gonna do kind of like this top um, area. Oh, also, I know that a lot of you guys have been asking, excuse me, have been asking about um, travel sets and travel paints and what to use. Um, so the entire trip that I was gone, I was painting and working with different materials. And um, I will report to you what I used and what I like to use. And um, we'll have them in stock so you can order them from us if you're interested. Um, but that was a really fun part of my trip is just being able to, um, like, use them in the wild and be like, yes, I stand behind this or like I had issues with this. So I'll go over that sometime. We'll do it, I'm sure, soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we can move on to step four, which is the windows. Um, hopefully everything is dry. If it's not dry, give it a minute to dry. So um, Deanne asked how I'm determining where I'm putting my shadows. So um, if you look at buildings, whenever they have these ledges, there will always be a shadow right underneath it because it's sticking out further than the building. So um, that's just, I'm, I'm imagining this building has like, you can imagine the side of the building where like at the very edge, there's like almost a crown. What is that called? Like just like a cr Wait, what? crown? Wait, Tailgate. <laughs> Tail. No, that's not it. So like, you know how at the top of buildings, how sometimes it will have like a beveled edge and like kind of come out? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kind of. Like a molding, like crown molding a little bit, yeah, but on the outside. The right but we can all picture what I'm talking about. That's essentially what I'm like imagining, like on the top here where I'm like, okay, it goes out and then it like comes in, goes out, comes in. Like it just has these different edges. And also like in between, it will it can go out and come back in. And so I'm just kind of like imagining that and putting my shadows there. So basically, wherever the edge of the building is going in, that's where I'm putting those shadows. Cornice, she said cornice. Cornice? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. I oh, great. And also ledge. Yes, these are all great words. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm kind of envisioning. Also, when we do our windows, because they go into the building, they're gonna have a stronger shadow. That's why those have, that's why we can tell that they're windows and that they go in um, is because they're darker values. So they're coming, going away from the light. And of course, this same exact scene could be painted very differently depending on where the light source is coming from. So that's where um, having reference photos are handy or going out and just looking at things in real life is the light changes all the time because the sun moves across the sky. So it just depends on where the sun is at on what you're painting. That's also how you determine shadows. Someone asked for fun facts about buildings. I do not have any fun facts, but someone said the Empire State Building was constructed in 13 months. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I was able to go to the uh, Sagrada Familia 
that right? Yeah, in Barcelona. And um, it's this really beautiful building, um, cathedral. Is that right? It's a cathedral, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Tell us. Um, anyways, um, it's really gorgeous. It's done by a famous architect, and um, I I think there's a, just a news article that they it's been being built forever, like a really long time. And they just got their building permit. <laughs> like the architect who wanted to do it, uh, I feel like his name's um, starts with a G. Gaudi. No, Gaudi and there's there's two of them, Gaudi and Giro. Should I Somebody's Google this? Is this something I should oh, Google? Giardelli. That's it, no. Giardelli. That's it. Um, I guess chocolate. I guess he initially got denied, and then he was like, I'm just gonna do it anyway. And then they've been working on it for like years and years and years, and they're like, oh, that actually never happened. So they just got it. Um, they said it will be done in seven years. I should post pictures from it. it. It's just, it's so tall and grand and it's just filled with like stained glass and so much detail you can't even, it's amazing that what people can do. That's all I know about buildings and I got most of those facts wrong. <laughs> Someone said, I'm buying you a thesaurus, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please do. <coughs> That'll actually be Keenan's job. I'm like, Get out that trusty th thesaurus. I'll just look for descriptions. There we go. I'm not sure how to find those. <laughs> well, we're gonna get, you're, you're gonna get familiar. We're gonna name it. It's gonna be a person on our show, pretty much. Okay. You didn't introduce your brushes today. That's because I got new brushes and I didn't oh, rename them yet. Dang. I wasn't sure about it, you know? You got it, that's not something you just, you know, you don't name a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's you got nine months. Like nine months to name a baby. It's I mean, for some blanket. people. You what? That's why you come up with or have you know, those crazy names like Mama and Jerome. <laughs> Apple. That's why I named myself. I have a cousin named Apple. Do you really? Mm -hmm. I'm really name. sorry. I just said that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> No, no, no. Yes. I'm not. Right. Like, I even Good. thought, I'm like, Apple's a safe one to say. Nobody actually knows anybody named Apple. <laughs> Helen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to your cousin. Apple's a great name. I'm... I had a cousin named Sparky. That was, that a, was his given name. That was his given Sparky. name? Yeah. Wow. Like, we're yeah. on the Windows step, correct? Yeah, we're on the last step. Just doing, just okay. like now, going we're in and kind of following I these. That transition phase. I don't know why, but... I feel like sometimes I get so focused that I don't actually hear you. Right. I was trying to fix something else, and then she had moved on. And <laughs> You're I like, ready. wait, what is going on? BTW, Taylor, I looked over there, and you are literally doing an amazing job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks awesome. So. <laughs> Helen had to put on her glasses. <laughs> I was like, what's going on over there? <laughs> Only had a monocle that was I know, just like, like hold it up real quick and then put it down. Okay, now I didn't do the windows on the Empire State Building first because that's where my wrist goes. So I like, um, sometimes smart. it's easier to start. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes it's easier to start on the left-hand side of the painting if you're right-handed and then work your way across so you're not smearing. I forget that trick a lot of the time, so don't feel bad. I just remembered it this one time, and I was like, Sarah, you got to say something about that. I love that you told the trick and then came out with saying that you forgot the trick. <laughs> that's just my favorite. I just, that's, that's, that's me being honest. That's me being real. <coughs> And um, if you're looking at these windows and you're like, these aren't like perfectly rectangled things, they kind of like drift off into nothing, what's going on? This is the part of the project where it's kind of um, 
has that urban sketching feel and it's okay. We're, we're just, we're trying to give quick information of the different surfaces on the building, that's it. We're not trying to go fully into detail about every nook and cranny on the windowsill. That's not what this project is about. This is about how, um, if you can just give people the idea with a small bit of information and still let them have the feeling that, okay, this is, these are buildings, these are a series of buildings and it goes in and out and those are windows and those are ledges. You've done your job, like you did it. Congratulations. So that's, that's what it's about. So don't get too hung up on like making sure the rectangles are, you know, perfectly go all the way evenly. Don't worry about that. It, again, it's just little bits of information to get the point across. And you can also make changes too where I'm just like, after I've painted this a little bit, if I wanna add a little bit more color on my highlighted areas, and maybe you don't, and you don't need it on your painting, you don't have to do what I'm doing all the time. But for me, I'm just like, you know, I just want a little bit more color here, like just, just a little. You absolutely have the right to go and put that in. Who's here? Who's that? Who's here? I don't. Is it Zachary? No, no I got no. some. No, it's not. Hi, hey, Brock. Oh, man. What is that? that tree? <laughs> oh, Carmelo. Oh, oh, I forgot him. Brock, do you want to come say hi to everybody? Show oh, off that fancy you shirt. Just, you just oh, we're all wearing shirt. shirts. That's you guys, you Brock, right? Keenan, you guys got to come back here and show we're all we're wearing our shirts. Of this? Somebody screenshot this Somebody and then post it in our group. I'm going to make it full screen. I'd like to apologize. Here, I'll stop painting for a second. Oh, we're not even in frame. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have to like lean over. Okay. Can you? Sorry about the hair. I'm. Should I? Is no, my fro? Oh, <laughs> oh, I thought it was <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I feel Thank really you. bad for calling out your last meeting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not even sugar. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm transcended. I'll, I'll transcend. make you transcend. <laughs> Wait, are you are you still not doing that? No, can't you tell? I, yeah. I just want to say, no, I'm so proud of you. It's been like weeks. It has been several. My job. Congratulations. Have you ever actually met you before? Hello, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome. Thank Thanks you. you. Thanks for, oh, you're not saying, okay, bye. I made treats for everybody and then I forgot them and I was heartbroken. Oh. oh. I was heartbroken and devastated. Thank you. I'm really excited to eat them when I don't have a mic on my throat. Ladies, please go. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so I just went in and added a little bit of color on the sides of my buildings because I just wanted a little bit of oomph. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to put oomph, oomph, just like that. <laughs> Maybe even say that while you're painting. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I did that. Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> Question from YouTube. Tube. Yeah. Uh, is the top right side angle of the left building off? Okay. Is the top right side angle of the left building? Is that this? Is that here? There's a lot of directions in that, and I'm not is sure. Is the left hand building's angle on the top right side to the left? Off. <laughs> like is it cut off like not I showing can't, I'm not sure okay if they're asking if like here we can see two sides of the building the side and the front this one we do not see the side we're only seeing the front of the building uh yes if that's what you're asking so it's almost like this building is like I did like this rough like wet on wet loose edge it's almost like it's drifting off into nothing i did not define the two sides of that building if you wish to define those two sides because it's bothering you go for it absolutely it's your painting if you want to like finish that off totally fine but the same way as this this right hand right hand side and the bottom kind of like have a rough edge and kind of float off it's a slow fade. yeah that's what i kind of did there so Oh, they're saying not that. Well, <laughs> I'm trying.
Could we please have a description of north, east, <laughs> west, or south? Okay, I'm also doing some rough, like I wanted stronger yeah. color on the left hand side like I had in my um, example. So I'm just gonna do some wet on that. Wet on wet in that area. I was trying to bring some color and it kind of did some stuff. Oh, I just did a huge water splotch in the middle of my painting, that's okay. Just soaked it up. I'm just looking at it trying to figure out what they're, um, I think maybe what they're saying is the perspective angle from this building compared to this building. I wonder if that is what they're talking about, which they are different angles. That could be um, the different heights of the building. I'm just looking at it. The same person commented and said, above the right window, there's more space than the left. Oh, like here, here? Is this what they're talking about? Possibly. I honestly have no idea. Uh, I think I was trying to just do the windows on a slant um, to go in line with the angle of the roof. But you're right, there is a strong difference in space. That could just that could just be that it's off. Maybe that's what, maybe I just did it wrong. So, if you want to go in and make sure they're evenly spaced here. Because this, so usually when you're doing buildings and perspectives, the line of the roof will usually inform the same line as the windows. They'll be the same angle. Um, so if you're looking at this, this, these are different angles. This one, and this is where it's super helpful to have like a, just a edge, because you can check the angle. So here's the angle of my roof line, and then here's the angle of my windows. You can see that my window angle should be a little bit higher. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Can you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, if you want to go in and change that that angle on your window, please do so. Please do so. Um, but that's a great catch, and that is why I love painting buildings, too, is you can go in and just do those quick angle checks to make sure that things are correct. So you can just... And this is also how you would do it, paint it in person too. If you were looking at a building and trying to draw a building in person, you can just use your pencil or paintbrush and honestly hold it up to the building and see what that angle is. And it would be the same angle on your paper. Okay, I think I'm just about done. How are you guys doing? Getting close? Mm -hmm. Good, because we're going to show everybody soon. Oh. <laughs> we need to do the um, windows on the big building. So. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Helen. Helen, I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> She's like, you forgot a huge part of your painting. Can you paint that in, please? Like, <laughs> you remember those? It was a Dr. Scholl's ads. It was like Jellin. Someone's Jellin. I want to be like Helen's Jellin. <laughs> remember that? No. no. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> the corniest commercial ever. And it was like I'm so and so's Jellin, and it was always like a rhyme of some sort. So whenever oh, Helen, yes. I'm like Helen's Jellin. <laughs> yes. My uncle always says Helen Melon. Oh, Helen Melon. Yeah. And then um, Mia Japania is my sister. My younger oh. sister. Um, Love it. Yeah, Helen Miller. Now, now I feel like I need to find those. To the prove yourself to that you weren't. What? To prove yourself that you're not just making up. You're like, you remember those gel <laughs> ads? We're like, no. I also like <laughs> older than every person in this room. Was so it from the 90s? Like, not that much older. Not that, I'm not that much older than you, but I'm always like, dude, is there just enough of a gap? Like, <laughs> there's something here? Okay, so I'm putting in the windows on my building. It's just darker values, going in and doing those little weird rectangle sketchy lines you can add more windows you can do less windows you can do round windows you can make sure your windows are lined up like it's all up to you so i hope that didn't come off too saucy i didn't mean that rude i appreciate it when you guys help me um but I, again this is your painting so you can make those decisions like how aisha decided to make her cactus antenna you know what i mean it's your painting you have the freedom to do that 
somebody said gelling like a felon. Katie, you get me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Questionable. We're sketchy. Or I just remember like chilling like a villain like a on one. penicillin <laughs> with Dylan. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> How much more can we do? <laughs> he was like, why you got to bring that into this? Why you got to put in some drugs in there? Because I don't know what it is. I don't know why you're making words up to make it me is, seem like a fool. It's an antibiotic. Yes. My husband is allergic to it, actually. Oh. He should wear a bracelet that says he's allergic to penicillin yes, because it's the first it's, thing people yeah, give yeah. you, okay. but he doesn't. He's allergic to like amoxicillin? I think he can... No, I don't know. I should know that, actually. I should know that. I'm sorry. I didn't I don't. bring that up. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Ooh, Michael, I'm really sorry. Luckily, he's not watching. Okay. Um, uh, the other thing that I just wanted to say is people have been adding so many different things to this project, which is so fun. And I love that you guys take creative freedom and make it your own. I love it. What? No, it's just a lot of bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to celebrate the bleed. So yeah, you celebrate, celebrate. Um, but the, the only thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, and if you did the Easter, the bunny silhouette Easter in the field, and, brought, and then Keenan started talking about putting a horse in there, like you can absolutely add whatever you want in there. The tricky thing is though, is just keeping the perspective right. So if you wanna add trees, absolutely add trees, but you have to think of how, what size the trees would be in relation to these buildings, and also the perspective of what those would be. Does that make sense? So like if I were to put in a tree right here, I probably wouldn't do a tree top with a trunk right here because that wouldn't match the perspective or the angle. I would most likely do um, like the tops of trees right here because how, how we're viewing this, the kind of angle this is, um, we wouldn't be able to see the full length of the tree because we can't see the full length of the building because it bleeds off the page. So that's just things to keep in mind whenever you add another element that's in there. Um, and the only reason why I say that is because we don't sometimes understand how important it is to do that. And we'll just go in hot and add something, which is awesome. But then sometimes we get frustrated because we're like, this doesn't look right and I don't know why. And a lot of it is just because the size of the relationship of the sizes between the elements um, usually need to stay aligned. Unless you're doing like, you know, a like a what a surreal painting or a, a, a different style. If you're doing it on purpose, it's okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's hold them up. Even if you're not ready, let's do this. It's time. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Which camera are we gonna do? Front camera. Front camera. Sure. Yeah. I could, could grab you, it you and like, move it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. It's going to be gonna, really shaky. Is it going to stay in focus, you think? If you sure. bring it closer? <laughs> Cameraman? Sure, sure. <laughs> okay, let's hold. I'm just going to be like, hold them up. All right, here we go. We're coming in hot. <laughs> We're gonna no, no, no. Turn around. We're going to start with Taylor. Turn around. Start in the center. <laughs> oh, oh. Can they hear us? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here's Where what happened. Where did you go? We're back. <laughs> We're still live. Okay. There was a lot of cord issues. This is not meant to be moved. Keenan got really excited. He just started moving I cameras. I blacked out for They're a second. They're attached all these things. Here, this is what I'll do. Okay. I'll put them in the center. What yeah, if we did that's that? Perfect. Okay, this is Helen's. Helen. Excellent. This is mine. Excellent. This is Aisha's. Excellent. Love the green. This that's is really, Suzanne's. That's really fast. Excellent. <laughs> that's this really fast. This is Taylor's. Ooh, look that at that dark so value. Good. That looks great. I love it. The, they thought that you fell. <laughs> <laughs> They're so thoughtful. 
Okay. <laughs> Who tripped? <laughs> Oops. Do uh, it again. Oh, hell oh, that was really quick. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I tried to warn you. Okay. But it's okay. Listen, they it's all fine. did a great job. Did you post it on Instagram or something? Yes. Moral of the story. I would just Paint. like to say thank you all so much for painting with us, sticking through us. I felt I was a little loopy tonight, but I appreciate you just hanging out with me and having a good time and laughing at our silliness. Um, I know that trying something new is really hard and scary, and that's why we like to hang out and talk <coughs> to make it less intimidating because we just want to be your friends and we just want you to be brave and have this creative outlet. So that's why we chatter. That's why we do it. And um, that's also just my personality. <laughs> if you want to see how me and Keenan are off the camera, it's exactly how we are 100%. while the camera is rolling. And honestly, how we are, how this whole company is, this is how Let's Make Art is. We're friends and we're family and we care about teaching you how to paint and having this creative outlet for you so you can work and do something for you. So you guys are amazing. Um, if you've painted this, share it. Um, put it on Instagram, hashtag let's make art or tag us in it, let's go make art. Facebook, you can do the same. We also have a wonderful Facebook community that is meant just for sharing your art. It's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Um, really great place to start sharing your art, especially if you're intimidated and you can see how everyone else is doing the same project you are. Remember when you put yourself out there, it's not about competition. It's not about being what's the best. It's about learning from each other. That's all it is. So you guys are great. Thanks so much for painting with me. I appreciate you and that's it. Bye.